Manus flat on the canvas. We are ready to rock and roll. Second round of action. There is a cut on Manus. Yeah. It's Jesus. My man B Hop got knocked out, dropped out the ring last night. I need a little judo baby. I need me a little judo baby. And let's let's do it, Ron. Let's see what feels like. That's your face for video. That's your face for video. That's nice. Martial arts chat. Martial arts chat. Hello, I'm John Boy McElroy and this Martial is the Arts Martial Arts, Arts Chat Podcast. We're back in London for this one. Cage Warriors 106 Night of Champions. What a Martial Arts Chat. It's going to be, man. So many Cage Warrior belts on the line. Well, I mentioned some outstanding scrap set as well. We'll be speaking to all the big fighters from this card, including featherweight champion Dean Truman, middleweight champion James Webb, and the main event, Nicholas Dolby and Ross Houston, as they battle out to see who is the undisputed Cage Warriors welterweight champion. We'll also be speaking to the finest in MMA media with John Sloan, John Ferguson of MMA Huddle, and Kieran Copley of Newsome MMA. So kick back and relax and enjoy the next few hours as we get you ready for Night of Champions in London. Before we hear the chat, first, just a quick shout out to our sponsors, A1 Fight Gear. A1 Fight Gear use the latest cutting edge boxing gloves for professional amateur fighters, gym enthusiasts and kickboxers. Local and national gyms in the UK do sales a favour, go check out a1fightgear.com. If you want to get into shape, get back into shape, just keep trimming the fat off, then go to bscale.co.uk, use the coupon code MARTIALARTSCHAT to save 15% off your purchases. They've got core sliders, straps and barbell pads, complete strength and conditioning programs to suit your needs. We're also sponsored by Feel Supreme. Feelsupreme.co.uk offer CBD oil and natural nutrition. They will assess your progress in diet and lifestyle, natural supplements and complementary services such as yoga, mind coaching and weight cutting programs. And finally, we're also sponsored by World of Martial Arts Television. Woma.tv produces, finds, acquires, commissions and presents all you ever wanted to know about martial arts. Discover techniques, exercises and forms from your favourite martial arts. Explore martial art philosophies, health, Hello, culture and spirituality. Podcast. And so to the chat, let with hear their it. coverage and build. It's Cage Warriors 106, Night of Champions. And we're delighted to welcome at this time the sharpshooter Nicholas Dolb. Nicholas, how are you, sir? I'm doing very good, thank you. How about you? Oh, like I said, I'm hanging in there by a thread, but um, <laughs> <laughs> enough about me, man. It's all about you. How's, how have you been with the training and preparation? I get, uh, I guess it's the most obvious question, is it? But how's the training yeah. and everything going ahead of this one at Night of Champions? It's been going very, very good. Um, just uh, finished off a day today with, the, with two training passes, uh, pretty intense ones, both of them. Um, so uh, I'm still kind of... I still kind of have all of the all of these endorphins in my body, uh, you know that high feeling you can kind of get after a good training. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's been going very good, and it's gonna go even better because I just uh, got to leave from my um, part time job, so I'm gonna be able to to train like full time for this fight. Oh wow, excellent! Yeah, I mean that's uh, <clears throat> wow. I, I, I didn't realize so you were you were working full time as well as your training up up until this point. No, I was I was working a part time job. Right, I see. So, uh, and how to, to cover cover the bills, but now I'm sure. <coughs> yeah, taking uh, taking the plunge and then uh, yeah. Is this, everything on, on this fight. Well, that's, that's that's fantastic to hear because then we get to see the absolute best of you, as, as if we haven't already. But I mean, have you? Um, has this been on your mind for a while to to go full time with with your training and things? Or yeah, yeah, it's only it's just been the economics that that kind of. Uh, um, was preventing it but sure. but now i found uh, some solutions to that so yeah. uh, it's gonna be i'm very uh, delighted to uh, to be able to take the yeah five last weeks on, on full time excellent oh well we're looking forward to seeing the benefits of that for sure before we look ahead yeah. to to ross houston and, and all this um chat for the main event um i was wondering if we could talk a wee bit about your sort of early days and in, in, in mma if that's all right sir Yes, of course. Coming through the ranks in uh, Denmark, right? The, so back in yeah. uh, 20, 2010. What are some of your memories? Because um, I know it's usually it's a, a fighter gala and um, those kind of promotions, I guess, you, you would have dealings with. What, what were some of your early memories uh, in MMA, sir? Um, well, there's a lot. Uh, I think up until I fought for the Cage Wars title the first time in 2014, I had all my fights in, uh, in Denmark. So uh, lots of good memories, but probably one of the the fondest ones was uh fighting at i can't remember the uh, it was fighter gala 
13, I think, 14, right. uh-huh. fought against this uh, Dutch guy called Raymond Jarman. He was a bit of a he was a bit of a journeyman, but still like had some some finishes over decent people. Mm-hmm. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, just did a lot of rowing today, and my lungs are completely <laughs> feeling it. <laughs> <coughs> I went for like a 2k um, personal record so there you go yeah. it was just like s- six and a half minutes of oh intense, come on uh, you're showing off now <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm back <laughs> but yeah that fight against uh, raymond that was that was it was like the whole setup was just kind of weird because they had these events uh, in the guy who held these events, we call him like the, the, the godfather of Danish MMA. Okay, right. His name is Otto. Uh-huh. And his his uh, like home city is Odense, which is on the on the island in the middle part of Denmark. Mm-hmm. Um, so he managed, I don't know, somehow he got a deal with like this local bingo hall. Right. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um to have his events there. So they, you know, they, they moved all the tables and stuff like that and put it in the cage. Mm-hmm. But it, so, but it was just like, I think they could, the height to the ceiling was, was so low that, that they almost couldn't fit in the lights for like, uh, to, to light up the mat. And because they were so low, you had like almost more like spots of light on the mat instead of like all, right. all of the mat being lit up. You can also see that on, on like the fight tape if you, if you find the fight. Um, but because the ceiling was so low, but it was, it was still a fairly big build. They could pack in like um, I'm guessing here, 400 maybe 500 people. Right. Uh-huh. But because the scene was so low, the the atmosphere was so intense. Oh yeah. And no even doubt. though, <clears throat> and even though this cage was pretty small, like it, it was not a full size uh, UFC cage. Right. Um, we 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 used to call this cage. It was one of the first ones built in Denmark. We used to call it the 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 um, the telephone uh, box. Right. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. that's huh? Because <laughs> yeah, it, it felt like that. If, if you were a striker, you were you were fucked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And the clinch—that's <laughs> the name of the game when you're in the box, right? So, so even even though the, the cage was so small, uh, the atmosphere was so intense in there that that sometimes uh, my cornerman had problems, uh, you know, getting getting instructions to yeah. me or the other fighters fighting uh-huh. at that event because because the atmosphere was just so crazy and intense. Is it something um, that um, you were able to? Some fighters talk about feeding off. If there's a high end energy crowd, did they, did they any? Or was it maybe more <coughs> the other way? Was did you find it discouraging or distraction? Well, anyway? for this fight, I, I, I think it fed into me because yeah. even now, when I look back at the fight, it was just like me going crazy from like first minute, <laughs> first second. <laughs> right. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, that was that was a pretty fun fight, and and it came like. I had fought not too long ago before that one, and then I got this fight as kind of like a you know late replacement thing. Uh-huh. So I only had like six weeks to train for the fight, but I was already kind of in shape, so it didn't really matter. So, but it, it was kind of fun that fight. <laughs> The first time I set eyes on you, um, you, you mentioned your first cage where he was run. Um, I'm sure everybody's seen the video. There was Sergey Churlov, you know that head kick, and he, he did the chicken <coughs> dance and all that. And you, you yeah. finished, you finished him fairly quickly after that. I, I finished his career. In fact, I think I don't think he, he ever fought again after that fight. Right? No, I'm I'm not quite sure if he has. I hasn't. I, I must not officially. I really check, checked up on him uh-huh. uh, on on Sherlock or typology. Um, but yeah. And it was kind of actually, I, I felt kind of bad in a way because at that that was back when Ukraine was like had massive riots and Russia was just coming into Ukraine, yeah. trying to take over some of the parts of the country. So you know, they almost had like basically civil war going on in the country, and he was yeah. fighting in Denmark and you know losing his the the biggest fight of his life. So in a, in a way, of could have been cool if you wanted but yeah then i would have lost them you know but you know what i mean um, oh of course i mean i guess you can't <clears throat> you can't think about that kind of stuff going in that's for after after the fact no isn't no it? no of course not but, but yeah I'm, I'm mostly bummed out about that i didn't get 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 the opportunity to say a high term after the fight for yeah. some reason i just couldn't find him and you know just kind of chat and make sure he was okay yeah. i like to do that 
Oh, fair play to you, mate. I mean, after that, we, we saw you uh, in the UFC. But, I mean, did you know at that time that you were... I mean, did you get the call from them? Did you know you were <coughs> going into the big league, so to speak? Well, I had one more fight to uh, defend the title in, uh, in the autumn of uh, fourteen. Um, and then Cage Wars went into this kind of hiatus. Yeah, right. And I was uh-huh. like... Uh, I didn't really know what was happening, and but then suddenly one day out of the blue, and what was it? It was like early March 2015. My uh, my coach back then, he uh, he called me up and was like, "Hey, um, should we go grab some lunch?" And just from the way he asked, I could I could tell something was up. Right. <laughs> but 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 honestly, I I did not expect. Like I thought maybe he was just like, "Yeah, we got this in the cage voice fight, whatever." Uh-huh. But then he broke the news to me, and like that was. Wow. It was like a dream come true, basically, or literally. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I, I've, I've, the fighters down there, Jim, <clears> um, <throat> our big dogs, Paul Craig, the Scottish Hit Squad, and we were all sort of there when we, we, we knew for a while <coughs> that it was coming kind of thing, but we were obviously all keeping it hush. And then when it got officially announced, it was just like, yeah, man, he jokes about it too. He's like, the happiest day of my life should be, you know, when yeah. my kids are born or whatever. But that was just yeah. like an overwhelming moment. You get signed to the UFC, stuff of dreams yeah. are made of, I guess, right? Exactly. Like, that's, that's what, like, I get, Every fighter that goes into fighting and turns pro, at least, I think they have, you know, they have some dreams of of getting to the UFC. Yeah. So, so once that, you know, actually happens, it's it's pretty incredible. Absolutely, my friend. UFC fight that sticks out uh, in the mind, and I'm sure you get asked about it loads, is um, the draw against Darren Till. What are some of your mm-hmm. memories and some what of your fight? thoughts? <laughs> yeah, that one. <laughs> no, I've only talked about it a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> is it that you get fed up talking about it, or did, did you? No, absolutely. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Man. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. It's it's you know it was an incredible fight. So of course it's it's always going to be a a conversation topic. So sure. that's cool. Yeah, man. Uh, fond memories, I guess, despite maybe not not getting the victory. Yeah, or... yeah. Well, it was it was kind of like. In a way, I felt like it was a perfect outcome, um, you know, because of course I wanted to win the fight. Mm. Um, but I think in some weird way, given how our career tra- trajectories uh, kind of became after that, I think in, in a way it was probably good that it was a draw because he went on to, he was still undefeated and he could bring that into sure. all of his, his next fights. Yes. And, and and because I was already kind of having mental problems at that time, you know, uh, my career tra- trajectory went down. Um, so it kind of kind of like he he pulled me along in a, in a way, in a sense, mm-hmm. by still being undefeated and and doing winning all the fights he did. Um, so so had I defeated him, you know, he would have been not undefeated anymore and not given all the hype and stuff like that. Yeah. So of course, I wanted to win the fight, but. But I think also how how you know how the fight turned out, it was the perfect outcome. Like if if there was any fight that should be a draw, it was that fight. I felt fair play. You mentioned uh, quite openly there about <clears throat> um, mental health problems and things. Are you able to to close up a wee bit more on that at that time yeah, in your life? Of course. of course, yeah. Please let us know. As this is round about the fight. Round, so this is is it straight after Darren Till that you, you're feeling this way, or is it? Just a number of no, things in uh, life, or yeah, we, it's. I think it actually basically happened after my I won the Cage Warriors title. See, um, I had the sense of just never, just waking up every morning and just feeling behind, like there was something I should have done that I didn't. Yeah, get out of the way. Um, uh. So it was just like, uh, and I, I was I was training full time at. at, at back then and you know so so i should have been able to to take care of all the things that you know might be stressing me but Mm -hmm. i couldn't put my finger on what specifically it was um so i just kind of pushed it aside and you know trained for fights and but i actually i think i I, yeah i never felt quite sharp for the for the fights after that one because i had this you know weird stress feeling in my body mm-hmm. um so it was actually already back when i when i won the title the last time that uh, that i started feeling like that and then i could keep it going for a while and just concentrate on the fights when i when i got uh, you know when i when i got the ufc contract but then you could clearly see in my in my demeanor 
for the for the two fights I had in UFC after the till fight. You know, mm-hmm. I was in there, I was fighting, but I didn't have that fire or or energy that that I usually feel like I have. Mm-hmm. So so I was fighting to win, but I, I I think looking from the outside, if you watch your fights, it it might have more looked like I was fighting not to lose. If if you honest. yeah no yeah, and I've heard guys have mentioned that before. <clears throat> um, it's almost like um, I don't want to speak for anyone in particular, but uh, when a fighter feels that way, they're just there to maybe make up the numbers. They're not. They've lost the kind of what you were touching on there, Nicholas. They've lost a the fire in their belly. They've lost maybe what got them to that position in yeah. the first place i guess and yeah, and, that, yeah, yeah. and is that how you felt yeah yeah and then i then i also had like especially after the till fight it was like i had all this hype and like i i kind of maybe knew that it was a good thing for me to maybe take a step back and, and mm-hmm. just take some time to sort things out but then at the same time i was like wow well you can push through this like, you know <laughs> i, I kind of told myself that yeah, it's no biggie. You'll figure it out. That's the fighter in you. I believe that. Now you, now you, yeah. now you got all the hype, and yeah. you should you kind of use that to, to go forward and, and win the next fight, and and then you can take some time off. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. so it's just pushing it in front of me. Uh-huh. Um, but what was pushing was just this giant rock that was just yeah. getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Yeah, gathering momentum. I mean, I guess yeah. um, I've, I've talked about this before with other fighters <clears> on the show. <throat> the the mindset of of an MMA guy is almost it's incredible what you guys can do. How you can, you know, fight through injuries, but with training, training camps can be brutal. Weight cuts, you name it. It's all these. And then it's another thing, and then it's another thing. And yeah. the 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 the. the strength of your your physique and your mentality being pushed to its limits the fighter inside you you strike me nicholas is a kind of guy who i'll just throw my i'll just you know push myself even more and i can deal with this yeah. later i guess right and sometimes yeah. and again i don't want to speak for you in particular sir, but I, i'm no, looking no, on the no. outside i think that sometimes mma fighters can be their own worst enemy for that you know for sure for sure but that's because we you know we i think a lot of guys including myself sometimes we we're right on the edge of yes. of of the of the knife. Mm-hmm. Where like if if you train too much, or are you are you, you try and come through this injury by training, you're gonna fall to one side and, and crash. Yes, but it but it, at the same time it feels like that if you don't, then you're gonna fall to the other side and, and crash as well, mm-hmm. because then you're not gonna perform in the fight. So mm-hmm. sometimes it really feels like a knife edge, uh, trying to balance. Um, all the all the stuff that's going on and and trying to find the best compromise um, when you're injured or if you're not feeling good you're feeling a bit down or you know if you have other struggles in your life it, yes. it's it's all, it always feels like a knife that's balanced or sometimes it feels like it when you have a fight coming up and and you have to deal with yeah fight related stuff or even not non-fight related stuff absolutely man so. must be so much pressure but i mean it's yeah. part, part of the journey though that probably sounds cheesy but i guess it's is, is that how you look at it it's it's just one of those things of of the journey of your mma career <clears throat> yeah i like it in a way because i thrive under pressure mm-hmm. so the, that's where i feel i perform the best yeah um or i perform even better under pressure yeah um so, so for me, it's it's been really uh, it's it's been a learning experience that that I really cherish because now, no matter what kind of pressure I'm put under, yeah. you know, I can almost always find some calmness and 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 find the focus to to figure out the best way to get through it because I've been in in so many crazy positions in my life. Like, I think in the last UFC fight I had, I I, I felt like just breaking down and then crying 10 wow. minutes before I had to walk into the fight. Wow. Like in an arena full of 16,000 people, mm-hmm. how, how many was like, so once you've dealt with that kind of pressure, everything else kind of doesn't maybe feel easy, but, but you know, it, it, it gives you some experience that you can draw on. Uh, late in life absolutely yeah absolutely well said so well let's look at more recent matters then your last um, three cage warrior performances here have been outstanding three victories three finishes the Alex Lahore one uh, for me was particularly impressive obviously you get the title it's in Denmark I mean that fight alone where does that much rack up is is that probably one of the best nights of your MMA career absolutely yeah absolutely um yeah that was you know that was a big uh, build up to the fight and and 
you know, maybe a bit of pressure on me. I was fighting on home soil for the first time in five years. So, yeah. you know, everybody wanted me to, to win, but Lahore was a really dangerous guy and mm. had a lot of powerful weapons in, in his toolbox. So it, it was interesting, but yeah, I, I kind of knew that I was going to win the fight. Not if, if you know, I just kind of knew in my heart. Um, so I wasn't worried like that, but, but yeah, that was a lot of uh, build up. And then just to be able to go out and perform the way I did, yeah. um, I was I was really proud about that because because I really managed to to keep my focus all the way through, and and I think that that showed in the outcome. Yeah, I mean, I'm a bit of a sucker for momentum, and you had <coughs> you had the momentum. I guess Alex did too, but you had the the clear momentum, and I don't know if it's more pressure or or more advantageous doing it in front of your own people, but. Um, it was flawless, man. You, you. I don't want to be, as they say, blowing smoke up your ass. But this run here in Cage Warriors has been nothing short of spectacular. What, what do you attribute this uh, this run to? I, I attribute it to to the the, um, the experiences that I've had of going through a depression. Mm. That, that you know, it can either break people or they come out a lot stronger. And, and that's what happened for me. I, I, I dealt with it you know took it head on and and dealt with the problems i had and and found out what i really wanted to do in life and, and that brought me another focus that i didn't have before um, and that combined with with becoming a parent that also you know i don't know if you have children yes sir. but but from that you learn how to focus and and you you learn how to prioritize and 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 perhaps push some things aside that that's not important and then really uh, focus on, on the important stuff and when I was like in the end of the depression before I started getting some help you know mm-hmm. a friend of some friend of, friends of mine they sat me down it wasn't wasn't like an intervention but close okay um, and they were like like what are you you you're out drinking your brains out every weekend is this what you want to do mm-hmm. you no know, you know that made me made me think a lot and I was like, I want to fight, and I never lost that passion. Um, I just lost uh, direction for a while. Sure. Um, so, so sitting down and thinking about that, uh, I never wanted to quit. And, and then I, did, you know, it just occurred to me that if I want to do this now, I have to to start getting, you know, I have to I have to turn around my life now, yes. not tomorrow, yes, but but right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was like an epiphany for me. And and that just led to, to like the last fight, and it's going to lead to this fight as well. That's good to hear, and good to hear that um, you've you've sort of <coughs> challenged. Um, I, I don't. I hate saying demons when people say demons. You've challenged these things in your life. Then let's say that, and um, and and came out uh, better for it. Um, are you a new father then, Nicholas? If you don't mind me asking, is it a wee boy or a wee girl? Or hey, we had a baby girl like yeah, almost eight months ago. Eight months. How's how's fatherhood treating you? <laughs> It's amazing. Yeah. Um, I'm very lucky to have a, a very understanding and, and lovely and, and really good partner. Um, mm-hmm. And she's doing a very good job on maternity leave with our daughter. And I'm, you know, so she spends the most of the time with her. Um, but but it's it's a true joy. And, and we have a really happy, uh, f- uh, amazing baby girl. So I'm I'm just loving every second of it. That's wonderful. Congratulations, my friend. Thank you. Uh, father, Thank you. father of two, and I had uh, our second this year. Uh, first yeah. as a boy, we get all this year. We get all arrived uh, the same day yeah. as my wife's birthday. So I have two oh, birth- birthday amazing. girls now. <laughs> it's going to cost me a lot, but yeah, that's well, it's, it's a beautiful it's thing. Easier right? to remember. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, <laughs> I never thought of that. You're probably quite one, right. One 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 important birthday date less to remember. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, mate. That was it. Well, let's look at Ross Houston then, because I've followed the hitman since he turned professional. Obviously, being <coughs> Scott, Scottish, I've had him on the podcast a few times. His last fight with Paterno, a good, nothing short of spectacular. What an amazing fight. Um, you must rate my fellow Scotsman, right? Um, yeah, yeah. He's, he's, a, he's a great fighter, uh, no doubt. Um, um, he's, he's got some skills. Uh, but I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us. That's cool. like, well, you know, he, he's got fairly decent striking and, and, and 
and clinch game and, and grappling as well. He's good at taking the backs of people and stuff like that. But I, I, at the same time, I feel he, he, he shows a lot of holes in his game, in his fights. It might be a different story when he's in the gym, but, uh, but I feel by looking at the tape, I, I see some clear holes that, that we can exploit for, mm-hmm. for this fight, me and my team. What I, like I said, I've been following Ross for a while, and what I've attributed a lot of his success, um, especially with every fight, is his athleticism. You know, he's a big guy for welterweight, very athletic. Does that factor into any of your thoughts in preparation for this one? Well, yeah, absolutely. We try and we try and look at every aspect of of what are my opponents bring, and and yeah, Ross is is a huge guy. He looks very strong, and <clears throat> and maybe that's something he's been able to rely on in training and in fighting that I think is going to cause him, him problems um, in in the fight against me because uh, yeah I, I feel like he has some bad habits that he hasn't really seemed to be adjusting uh, over his career so um, but yeah for sure he, he's he's got some some very good tools in his toolbox so it's an, uh, an interesting challenge to try and uh, solve that Rubik's Cube he is and, and yeah. find the best to, solution to to winning over him. I can't wait to see it, man. It's going to be some scrap for sure. It's going to be an amazing night. My next question is my least favourite question because it means <laughs> I, I have to ask fighters to look ahead and I, I never want to do that, but I guess I'm asking it anyway. Aren't I? After Ross, if you get the W, my friends, you're the undisputed champion. What does the rest of the year hold for the Sharpshire? Well, I guess that's also the interesting aspect of this fight. Um, I guess it's it's you know it's gonna be like a, an exclusion. F- oh, that's not the right word. It's gonna be like an elimination fight for both of us, right? Mm-hmm. If he wins, he's probably gonna get a UFC contract. If I win, it's probably gonna be de- me making uh, getting the contract. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what's uh, at stake here. Yeah. Um, so you know, we, we're both. Uh, Probably feeling the pressure and the, and the will to to prevail in this fight, but you know there can only be one winner. There can be only one. I think they said that in the Highlander, right? There can be only one. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. <laughs> it's been Nicholas. a while since I watched that movie. Oh, it's a classic, isn't it? Uh, yeah. But it's an absolute pleasure getting your time on the podcast. Sir. Before I let you go, um, yeah. I just want to offer you the floor if you want to shout out any sponsors, associates, family, friends, anyone you like, sir. Um, now's your time. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, big thanks to uh, to my incredible team at Rumble Sports and and my incredible coaches. Um, yeah, they really, uh, they've really stepped up and and filled out some big shoes, and uh, I'm happy for that. Big thank you to all my sponsors. Uh, they do a do a great job of helping me uh, being able to to train for the fights, and and most of all my incredible partner, and fiance, and uh, baby mama. Um, she's doing a very good job of keeping uh, the home together, so so I can be as rested and and ready for for training as possible. And uh, thanks you guys for having me on the podcast. Oh, it's a pleasure, sir, sir, sir. And, and best of luck at Cage Warriors in London, my friends. Uh, hoping Thank to get you. down there too, so um, maybe we'll get a chance to catch up uh, in person if that's all right. That would be amazing. I'd love to. takes place the 29th for June in London and I'm pleased to see we have returning to the show and now the middleweight champ James Webb James how you doing sir very good man thank you for having me back actually I just realised we're doing a uh, a uh, voice voice call aren't we as you were <laughs> introing me I was doing a bit of shadow boxing you know for the camera but that's there's well, no camera here that's exactly why because <laughs> you're too good looking that's what it is I can't even put you next to me because by comparison it's just going to look brutal man I could have been showing me <laughs> can't do it uh, Okay, <laughs> I'll let you off. <laughs> but I mean, last time we spoke, obviously you were chasing that vacant belt. You and Thomas could go throwing yeah. down uh, another submission, mate, man. But just yeah. cash your mind back. Tell us, tell us how you were feeling that night, and, and when he said, uh, uh, <laughs> I, uh, "How do I feel?" It was very, uh, very surreal, you know. Um, it probably looked like the least emotional shoot out of the last few fights, but it was just more like. That just happened. Aye. And the weird thing was, man, this is the weird thing. When I like was setting up my, I set up the, the head and arm 
I knew I had to hit an arm, so I knew then I won. It was weird, do you know what I mean? I was already like, I've just won, so I knew I had it. The second um, it was on, you just knew it was game over, right? I just knew, yeah, as soon as I had my hands together, I had his wrist and was looking for the, like, the, the mount, and I knew what I was setting up there, you know? So I knew, it was a weird feeling, you know, I almost was like celebrating, celebrating then, like, I've got it, and then it happened. <laughs> wow. You know, you've already braced it, you've got it, you know? Like, when, when I fought Jason, I sort of, like, wasn't expecting him to hit him and him to him to feel that you know so like you sort of celebrate in the moment but I feel like I was already celebrating in the moment before I had the tap almost you know so um, it was very surreal and um, you just look so comfortable again though man it was just like an, yet another I know it was another submission but like yeah you, you didn't look were you ever did you ever feel any bother at any time during the fight um, no nah, like I, I, I wasn't very happy with my performance actually me and Chris sat down actually just after and they mm-hmm. said to me that that wasn't your best performance, you know, and I know it wasn't. I was a little bit disappointed that it went as long as it did. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I feel like I could have had the same finish in the second round. I went to trip him, and I actually got reversed, and it's a, it's a, it's a trip that I'm normally very good at, and I just, I don't know what the fuck I was doing. But as I let, as he reversed me, and I was in side control, I remember I actually said to myself, you fucking idiot, I actually said that, you, you, you effing idiot, you know? And I sort of like, I didn't panic. I knew, like, you, you can just feel the different pressures people have. I wasn't panicked. I was very very comfortable there I managed to like sit back out I just knew I was going to get myself back out but I was very disappointed that I actually had myself turned and it, it, when it, even when we went the, like, you know we had the after party after I was like I wasn't like my normal self you know like a, it, it seems very um, ungrateful to say that but like I knew that wasn't a good performance for me I knew that um, there was things I'd done that I'd never do and so like when everyone was celebrating after I wasn't actually I was sat to my girlfriend I was like and even said to Chris I was like I want to go but I didn't want to be there, you know, like mm-hmm. um, because I didn't feel like it was it was deserved to <laughs> to celebrate almost, you know, which is oh. bizarre, you know. Yeah, um, man. I mean, it's like yeah. uh, I suppose that's maybe a testament to you, like your your own worst critic, and that can't be a bad thing, right? No, I've always been that way, though. You know, like um, Chris was said to me after fucking training sessions, he's like, "You're just gonna go away now and just like demoralise yourself." But something <laughs> happened. Right. I, right. I, I do do that. I do that all the time, you know. Yeah. But um, something's working, you know. So. Um, I'm always progressing, which is great. Yeah. Um, you know, and again, like yeah, like um, everyone, everyone loves talking big about themselves. Um, I think uh, it's when you, you know, like I, I personally notice my my downfalls. You know, I know I know what I'm doing, and I know what's right and wrong, and that's why I don't think I'm that much of a twat, really. You know, like there's a lot of people who only see the greatness in themselves, and they think they're the next big thing, and you know, all of a sudden they get shocked. Yeah. So. Um, I just think, yeah, I don't really know there. I'm just talking some nonsense there. No, you're right, you're quite right. You're keeping yourself grounded, man. I mean, that's what the name of this game is. It's just, look at Michael Vernon Page the other night in Bellator, like... Yeah, you got you got a, a reality check, didn't he, for that boy, Jesus, Almost, man. Almost, yeah. I mean, Liam was a phenomenal fighter, you know. He's a very... He's like one of those very high-level all-rounders, you know? Yeah, yeah, all that's facets. That's the problem, you know? Uh, uh, like, yeah, that's the problem. That's that's that new age of MMA, you know? Um, Athletes that just, that they just absorb up absolutely everything, man. Yeah, and that's what, hopefully, that's what, that's the route I'm trying to take now. I'm trying to make everything catch up with my, my, my cage work and my, my ground game, you know? And, you know, like, um, there's always a threat on the ground, especially with strikes, but, you know, like, I haven't really felt any sort of danger with anyone trying to grab me yet and clinch me and, um, you know, like I, I feel like there's a lot more to show to my game, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um, but I know my route to victory always. So um, that will just, I'll just stay with that, you know. Absolutely, well said, man. We just wrapped up um, a podcast for the Clan Wars show, and yeah. I was chatting to one of your boys there, uh, Cal Gallagher. He was, um, yeah. he was clearing me up because it's not Swords anymore, right? It's Tom King and Chris Fields. <laughs> we, yeah, we're now a team. Yeah, we're Team KF now. Yeah. yeah. Anything so, different um, than, uh, I imagine, probably not for yourself. It's pretty much business as usual. Um, nah, nothing's different. Like, for me, I still get abused as much as it was <laughs> when it was SPG. <laughs> so, <laughs> so. no, nah, nothing changed, actually. I just think it was um, it was needed for the gym, you know? Like, it was needed for Tom and Chris. It was mm-hmm. needed for their own recognition more than anything. Like, um, you know, everyone believes their coaches are the, the best and this and that. I actually truly believe they are the best coaches in Ireland, you know, they wasn't getting that recognition and it's not really uh, my place to talk about any of that, but um, I just think now Team KF, um, you're going to see like a a new a new wave coming through almost, you know, um, 
you're going to see a, 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 another team at the top, and I do, I do believe it will be Team KF 100%. You know, yeah. um, the guys that are competing and um, competing in jiu-jitsu and competing in the kickboxing, the MMA, the amateur MMA, they're just they're steamrolling everything. You know, from amateur to pro now, um, everything that we do is one, and it's, it's, it is down to the coach, and it comes from the top down. You know, and um, the, 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 you know, it's the standard they set and. Uh, it's paying off, you know. So, like I said, I think we're going to get another wave of like. like I was just chatting to Tom recently. Actually, he was saying like 2010 and 2013. Well, that that period in Irish MMA was the glory for them almost, you know. Mm-hmm. And it yeah. sort of carried on for a year after. And I think like we're going to try and replicate that again here, you know. So, obviously, I'm I'm English. So I'm just hoping that they include me in the Irish takeover again. <laughs> <laughs> Can adopt the Shamrock, mate. That's it. Uh... <laughs> uh, uh, Chris actually called me yesterday the Irish Lion because the Lion's the English thing, isn't it? You know, there you he's go. calling me calling me the Irish Lion. So <laughs> that's going to be the announcement for your for your next case fight for sure, man. Which maybe, is, maybe. Just uh, then again, <laughs> they 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 both actually slag off the Lions. All I see is Tom and Chris talking about the memes. You know, the memes about the Lions. And all oh that. no so doubt. They're, Hi, I'm they're, really... they're secretly probably slagging me off. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so good. Tom and Chris. Are, I mean, they're two outstanding guys in their own right. But um, we're speaking just a wee bit prior there, Chris. Um, we're supposed to have this fight. Uh, so I'm getting maybe a bit mixed up. So he, yeah. he had a fight with Risen. Things went south, or what you said there was no. He fight. was um, he was signed to fight last week. End, which was the 11th, is that right? Yeah, he yeah. went to fight the 11th of May in Sweden on Superior Challenge against Carl Braxton, I think. Um, Carl actually fought a few weeks prior to that and agreed to the fight with Chris, but he fought in Risen, so then he pulled the fight um, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, again, I think that's the 7th out of 9 pullouts for oh, Chris. Oh, man, man, that's horrible. Poor fella, man, poor fella. Like... <laughs> He, he's just yeah, he's just like uh, can't cut. He literally can't catch a break. You know, he's just he's just uh, he gets himself psyched for one. It doesn't happen, yeah. and then all of a sudden he's got like two weeks to get ready for one. You know, so oh, I saw. I mean, one's bad. <laughs> exactly, one's bad enough in the short and long. I, I remember talking yeah. to Scott Malone when he was turning pro, and it seemed yeah. like the first six, seven fights of his career. Um, guys are <laughs> I don't want to speculate but it seemed like right guys no, were, no, guys were waiting till like a week off oh I can't do the fight for whatever bullshit reason it's just like come on man and yeah. it was six six in a row it's like come on what do you yeah. need to do to catch a break like you said I mean yeah you, you can't sometimes I mean Scott come from that high level judoka background didn't he, you know so like people like, obviously seeing imagine, that and actually a lot of people went to know what Especially amateur, like we take it serious. I took it seriously. No doubt, Scott took it very seriously as well. But I mean, a lot of people don't, and they're just looking at that thinking, Does this, "I don't really want this mother fucking taking me on my that's head, you know, that's exactly <laughs> breaking that's... me neck, you know." Yeah. So, but he looked great the other day, you know, like him and Jack put on a on a good show, and you know, oh like, yeah, um, yeah, top 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 fighter man, and, and then top. I think he is, sure. man. I think he is. I think he's very good, you know. And is it like you know we we're, we're we're about the same sort of like experience in the pro careers and he's fighting for the title you know man like he's he's very good man and what i liked about scott and jack is they conduct themselves like proper athletes you know like there was no there was no need to do any that yeah exactly like yeah no i like that that's how i try to conduct myself it is a sport you know Mm -hmm. um so yeah that's what i liked about it and i never I, i don't really know him Anyway, you know, but like you don't know what people like or not. Jack's like you see that from him, you know. He's a yeah. he's a fucking serious fighter, but a very nice guy, and you've got that. You got that from Scott as well, you know. So absolutely, man, two top yeah. guys for sure. Two top guys. Let's get an eight champions. So obviously, for yourself, big man. Uh, I mean, that, that this is this is going to be something else. Um, just just give me your thoughts. Give me your thoughts on on how the, how you think it's going to go down. You, you must have visualised this. Um, How's it all going to play out? Yeah, I don't really know how. Any of it goes down, I just know that as soon as I get hold of someone, it normally finishes, you know. So um, the fight will finish, you know. Like I'm not, I'm not in there to outpoint anyone or get decisions. I'm there to finish, and I'm very confident again. Like a hundred percent, I'll finish that fight, you know. Like I know that. Um, I like, I don't know, man. Like I, I think my biggest, the, the biggest thing that goes for me is I think a lot of people think they can counter the style. Like Chris said, you know, and the thing is, they don't know what it, they, they they don't feel it until they feel it, and it's different, and it's not like just for a minute and it breaks, 
mm-hmm. it's consistent, you know, like it'll I'll I'll still be there and I'll still be pushing and I'll still be looking for takedowns and I don't I don't push against the cage and I try and find what I want, you know, and, and I end up finding a way and again that's it, I just find a way to win, you know, and I, I don't have any quit in me. So um I know that I'll finish the fight, I know that I will um without a doubt get a takedown, I will go through our secret sequences and I always have my my like one, two, three, four off it, you know, there's never I'm never just looking for one thing. Like I've I've always, I'm always four steps ahead of there, you know, so mm-hmm. um I don't know I'll finish the fight, you know, I will finish the fight. He's got a lot of kills on his record, it seems does that play into your thoughts at all going to this one? No, nah, like Jason Radcliffe had a lot of KOs as well and better play I suppose. Um that doesn't really concern me, you know, like um it's something to watch out for but it's it's the it's the risk that like he he's got as much chance of carrying me as I've got of carrying him, you know. Yeah, like, exactly. I've been going back in at like ninety four kilos, so I mean you swing it you swing it that way and um people get hurt, you know. So I don't yeah. you know if you if you look at it like on what he can do, I can do. Um can he take me down, control me and finish me? Definitely not. So um I, I feel like the odds stack in my favour. Aye, no, you're to me. It's going to be some scrap for sure on a pack card, yeah. as we said, man. And, and we, us fans, we can't wait to see all these fights go down. But, but um, yeah. I never want fighters to look too far ahead. I always did a stunner. But let's just ask the question <laughs> anyway. After Frederick, you get a W. It's two 0 this year. First title of defence to boot. What's the rest of the plan? For, you know, for 2019. What would what, what you want to have? Uh, well, up in I had a few things on my old vision board, which I set out in the year. You know. Uh-huh. Um, one of them was to win the Cage Warriors title. Check. Um, one of them was to get engaged, pick that off. Yep. <laughs> um, the next one is to defend the belt and sign to the UFC. And that's what I'm looking for this year, you know. Um, and they will happen, you know. I'm very confident. Um, people obviously talk about sacrifice and discipline. Like, fucking I, like, like I said, I've been people now now, like I... I come over every week and train. I put myself out. I go home and train. Like I'm, like I live in the gym. Um, Chris lets me stay here sometimes, you know. But like they're those sacrifices, you know. Being away from home, all I can do here, John, is train. I don't have anything to do. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I don't have like it's not. I don't have like a social life or anything. I'm just here. I just train. Um, I get my work and I go home. I train. And I train with some savage jiu-jitsu guys back home. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, like things are working, you know. So far, everything's working. The plans are planning out. And again, yeah, I, I, you know, even if I have to fight again this year, I believe by the end of this year I'll sign to the UFC. You know, um, I really want to um, fight like a wrestler. You know, that's awesome. I want to see. I want to see what these Americans can do. <laughs> yeah, it's about time, man. We brought some uh, some wrestling skills to this country. It's been lagging yeah, for too long. Like, I just want to, yeah. I just want to see how it how it compares, you know, because you know, can a wrestler keep me down? I don't think so. And can a wrestler submit me or and not get submitted? You know, if the wrestlers dive in with their heads, you know. Um, I don't know. It's just a, I feel like, like I've said it before. I think this side of the world, like you're saying, like the next fight, I have, like all the guys I fight, you know, they're all they're all heavy hitters, you know. It's almost harder to make it in the UFC from this side of the world because. You know, he might just get KO'd at one yeah. point, you know, yeah. That's true, man. Like, it is, yeah. So, like, again, like, I think it's harder for all of us trying to... to what about yeah, doing, like, because uh, a lot of guys do, like, a trip to Alpha Male or, or something like that. Did you ever fancy doing something like that for a part of a training nah. camp? Too um, pricey, I don't want it. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any money anyway, but, I mean... Uh, that is expensive. <laughs> I couldn't afford that, but for me, I feel like I've... I feel very like since I've had everything in my life the past like year very, very like set up everything's very everything's like very much in place right now and nothing's going wrong you know everything's going how it should be you know I'm very happy in all aspects of my life you know um, everywhere and I think that that's showing in my performances you know like nothing's really bothering me you know like so you know I'm happy training I'm happy doing what I do I'm, you know everything's good. And I'm in a good place, so I, do, I wouldn't see no need to go change. I'd be if I went to the states, I'd obviously be open to going to doing a few workouts. But as far as changing teams and camps and all that, like um, Chris personally is the guy that made me. You know, like he he 
but I had a certain skill set when I come here, you know, um, from the grappling and a little bit of like kickboxing and stuff. But he's the one who's put it all together for me, you know. So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't really feel the need to go elsewhere. I feel like this is this is where I belong, you know, and um, this is where I'll stay, you know. That's it. I know you're probably coming. If it ain't broke, man, as it as it goes, then then why change it? Right, exactly. It's it's working for you, so there's no need exactly, to yeah. no need to plug it in else. And hey, listen, I'll let you go, big man, because I know you get some strength and conditioning come up. But always a pleasure to get taking podcast. Before I let you go, just want to offer the floor here, man. If you want to shout out sponsors, associates, family, friends, anyone you like, it's all yours, mate. Yeah, do you know what? Let's go. What we got? We've got uh, so Team KF, um, the Irish Strength Institute. Stephen Webb and Sun Roofing, J.E. Putney and Sun Construction. I have players. Simon Higgins is a chef over here, does me some food. Um, and Graded, my barber. My friend Ethan. And then obviously my family, my friends, and my, my fiance, Sid. She, she's amazing. Awesome, man. <laughs> James Webb, thanks again, man, for coming back on the show and um, best I'll get Cage Warriors. So. Yeah, no, thank you, man. I'll chat to you after I win. Thank you very much. Top. Hello, welcome to Martial Arts Chat Podcast. On the episode, we're continuing with the coverage and build Cage Warriors 106. It's Night of Champions, and we have at this time the featherweight champion, Mr. Dean Truman. Dean, how are you doing, my friend? Yeah, man, I'm good. How are you? Hang it with. Like I said, man, I always tell people hanging in there, and that's what I feel, man. I feel like I'm hanging by a thread and getting fat, but. Listen, I wish I could could be getting fat. What's your um, when it's off season? What's your uh, your your guilty pleasure? What's your what's your munch of choice? Honestly, anything. Yeah, man. I'm 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 bad. I'm bad. I've got a sweet tooth, so cake, sweets. You know, I I nail it all. There you go, man. Uh, There's a lot of guys say that's always the chocolate, the cakes to go to. It never yeah. seems to be. I never hear a guy going like, "Oh, it's nuts or crisps or pizza, maybe." But it's, it's usually chocolate and chalky bickies are there. Yeah, like I say, anything for me. Cause anything. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite strict, you know. So anything, get you... me anything. I see anything, even if I don't like it. The first week of after a fight, oh, it tastes glorious. It. Aye, of course, man. Yeah, <laughs> That's how it goes down. Is, yeah. is the cut all right for you? Do you find getting down for featherweight is it an easy task or? Um, it's not easy. I mean, I, I, I don't believe any fighter when they say getting to a certain weight is easy. I don't believe that. Um, the dieting and that goes hand in hand with the training, I suppose. So the worst thing for me is snacking. Like I'm like, oh, what can I do? I want something to eat. It's too so easy done, but, isn't it? Hi. Yeah, it is exactly. But then the dieting, I sort of, I wean myself off the foods and diet and that comes off relatively well but then it's the last the last few pounds when you're in the hot baths and the sauna that's a struggle really <clears throat> would you um so come like see a, a week off like on a monday what were you yep. tipping the scales at how, how close are you to feather it uh, <laughs> bloody hell you don't want to know mate I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a good I'm, I'm a good five or six kilos away yeah that's not too bad yeah that's not no. too bad that's all but, right uh, yeah i mean a lot a lot of the bigger guys can do more, obviously, but the smaller you get, I think the, the harder it is to shift big mats, you know? I suppose so. Um, I mean, we'll get to your yeah, mads and um, maybe chat a wee bit sore in later on, but I uh, just want you to cast your mind back, man, to Cage Warriors 100, because it was, I mean, it was some night in general in Cardiff, but yourself, yeah. Aidan Lee, man, what a scrap. I mean, I had massive yeah. respect for, um, for Lee because he choked out my boy Paul McBain, and then you yeah. went in there and got the job done, man, took the title, third round finish. How does it rack up in terms of like your MMA career was that probably one of the greatest nights yeah 100% it's the best it's the biggest achievement of my career so right. far um, <clears throat> but saying that it's also only the start um, yeah. but you know uh, Aiden Lee we, we sort of stuck to the game plan the game plan was to sort of move about on him um, let him come to me and let him let him tire himself out uh, granted it wasn't to give him my back <laughs> but <you> know, <laughs> yeah. Game plans, game plans don't always work to the <clears throat> down to the T, you know. But he got my back, and I defended like I'd I'd practice in the gym thousands of times. Mm-hmm. We knew that was his strength. Like you say, when he got McBain's back, he, that was his game, and that was where yeah. he was, it, that's where he was going to beat McBain. And and to be honest, that's where he was going to beat me if he was going to beat me. I, I believe I don't think he'd have beat me anywhere else. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the back was the dangerous part, but I defended it well, stayed calm did everything correct and and then went on to beat him and I knew that 
well, we knew that he would fade in the later rounds. Right. And uh, he did, as we planned. Rough house MMA, is that where you're, uh, is that where you're getting around to, mate? Uh, Hardy Wallhead. Um, oh, Jimmy Wallhead, that's his new place with Dan Hardy, right? Yeah, Jimmy ah. and Dan. I mean, I've trained with them boys f- forever, do you know what I mean? When uh-huh. it was rough ass, I trained with them as a right. little youngster, a little beginner. <laughs> um, right. And then, obviously, I've trained with Jimmy ever since. Uh, but I also travel, I mean, I, I go to my local gym in Nottingham MMA, right. do all my grappling there. Um, and I work with a Thai boxing coach in in my hometown, Eccleston, uh, Alan Whitten. And and I sometimes travel down London shoot, um, train with the boys down there. So, you know, you, I, I travel all over. Getting around a lot. A lot of, I mean, it's, guys, it's, it's, uh, I, I like to hear that though, man. I like to hear guys that, that you know, bounce around and, uh, yeah. you know, <coughs> evolution, I guess. It sounds cheesy to say, but you know what I mean? Is that the, the name of the game? Just trying to improve all facets? 100%. I mean, uh, I'm learning from the best uh, in every every area, you know. Uh, so, I think, like I say, it's evolved my game uh, massively, training with all these different people. Uh, some people are a bit too loyal to the gyms. Um, not, not, no, 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 that sounds wrong. But they're better than the gyms they're at and they don't want to leave and go to other places. Yeah, you know what I mean? absolutely. Uh, and I think that holds some people back. But I've, I've, I seem to have a a good um, a good camp right now. Everything's working, and like say three wins in a row now. So yeah, so what's going right? Oh, you're, oh, you're in a good place for sure, mate. I was just having a wee nosy at your social media as well. I see, is it your wee boy? You're, uh, he's starting out and uh, he got him started <laughs> in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right? Yeah, well, I teach on a on a Friday night. Right. I teach down at the Hardy Wallet Gym. Um, I teach the grappling in the MMA, and obviously. My lad was with me that night, so I took him down with me. We were practicing that sweet with the beginners, and and he, he took to it, and he, he nice. wanted to try it on me. So I keep I keep I keep feeding him little things, you know. He's only five, so Aye. nothing too seriously. But I just keep feeding him little little tricks and little techniques, and he likes it, you know. So oh, that's cracking, man! I'm, I'm... Yeah, like, I, I was with him early, and he's like, I want to do the sweet one. Like, <laughs> he's like shouting my missus in. I want to show you this. That's great, man. I love hearing new yeah. stories like that. My wee lad, he's turned, uh, he just turned four. I usually do, I'm a school teacher, but in the summer we do like, uh, every teacher does a different summer camps and mine's his martial arts for the kids. Oh, and okay. I, I started bringing him along uh, last year, man. He was only three, but we did yeah. some, it was fun to see, like, just to, just to see the little ones trying jiu-jitsu, trying a bit of tie and stuff. And, yeah. and it's not letting the feather on fire or anything, but, you know, it's just, it's an introduction in and it's good to see yeah. them. You know, exactly, like that, man. and who knows? They might say in a year, a couple of years' time, and they're a bit older. I think, yeah, I wanted to give that a try. God, I hope not, man. If he's a teenager and then he starts <laughs> eyeing me up, take my back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got... it, then you can ban that. You're going to football. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, exactly, man. Roll about yeah. for half an hour. Um, yeah. Let's get to Mads then, because like I said, I remember seeing him up here at Soma. He was hitting Japanese yeah. necktie. In fact, I think he was known for it uh, coming into that fight in Glasgow. Um, and he, and that's why he finished the boy with that. And I figure he was fighting. Yeah, but we've yeah. seen him doing in Cage Warriors as well. I, I guess I'm asking the probably obvious question here: Is it smart to be prepared for a particular submission? Kind of what you were saying there, Aiden Lee. Like, it was smart to be prepared for if he was going to take you back, or yeah. are you just focusing on yourself and, and what you got to do? Then, in all fairness, I am focusing on myself and what I, I need to do. But obviously, I'd be stupid to not uh, drill and spar. The, the bad positions yeah. so, you know we do a lot of bad position sparring uh, here at Notts MMA and at Hardy Warlow um, <clears throat> so they'll put they'll put me in the positions and I've got to fight out of them and, and not get tapped so mm-hmm. you know I'm going to be I'm going to be ready for that but I'm also training on, specifically not to be there you know mm-hmm. so my my game is to not be there but obviously that doesn't always work as you see with Aiden Lee, I, I never planned for him to get my back, but I'm there and I was comfortable and I defended properly. So the same with him and Matt. If he manages to get me in that position, mm-hmm. I'm going to be well prepared for it and I'm ready to defend. Yeah, man. Fair play. We've heard you say before uh, in interviews, well, I've heard you say, I think it was in the lead up to Aiden Lee or maybe it was after I can't remember, but you always talk about proving people wrong, like this perception yeah. that you're the underdog. I think it was after Lewis Monarch, actually. I remember hearing an interview where he said that, um, 
I mean, I don't want to blow smoke up your ass. You're a top class fighter, mate. You've now got the belt. Thank you. But whoever challenges you has got to prove you wrong now, and it? it's got to be that that's that's a perception. Or do you just do you still just see yourself as you're, like, you're happy to embrace underdog or whatever? I'm happy to be the underdog. Uh, me being the underdog makes me train harder and makes me feel like yeah, look, I've got to prove all these wrong. Motivation, um, right? Aye. And it's motivation for me exactly. Um, I think again, I will probably be the underdog going into the Masvidal fight, but I I'm not bothered. You know, his ex UFC is is on a good win streak. Mm-hmm. So people are probably looking at him to win, but again, I, I'll go in there and I'll, I'll prove everyone wrong. I'll probably pull off some funky shit, yeah. uh, <laughs> like I have done in my past few fights, and make an exciting fight as always. That's class, man. You and Soren back, I mean, I was speaking prior, I was really looking forward to it, um, and we were there for, uh, when him and Paddy scrapped out at Lightweight. Uh, obviously, I know you've got your hands full with Mads here. And the true Viking, so we were saying there that he's, he doesn't fancy the cut anymore, but I don't know, maybe somewhere down the line, is it, would it, is it something, a lot of fighters see, like, see when there's a, a fight pulled and it's got a bit of a, a bit high profile behind it, at some point they want to scratch that itch, it's fighting soaring back at some point in, in your mind? Yeah, I mean, if, the, if the, the fight was right, the right fight was offered, oh, I would 100% take it. Uh, my manager pushed for me to, to fight Soren at lightweight for the belt when uh, before he vacated Is that right? to come February. Yeah, my my uh, my manager says, look, he's won the February belt. He'll go and fight Soren at lightweight. But uh, they had other plans, and obviously that plan was to come down and fight for my belt. Um, yeah. So they, so they wouldn't allow it. But yeah, like I say, if if that came along and, and maybe he was the lightweight champ again, I'd fight him. He'd have to be for the for the lightweight title or sure. maybe UFC. Yeah. Um, or, or for the February title, but like I say, he doesn't fancy that cut, so, you know, we'll have to see what happens. It has to be the right fight. Fair play, mate. Um, one more thing, I hate asking this question, but I guess I'm asking it anyway. Uh, after after this one at Night of Champions, right, like, you get the W. Yeah. I hate to tell people, this is the way I hate. I hate asking fighters to look too far ahead because you've got enough on your plate. But after Mads, if you get the victory, what's the plan for the rest of 2019? What, what, where, where do you see yourself by the end of the year? Honestly, the plan is to fight and be, re- be, be be active, just like last year. I want I want three fights this year. Right. So whether whether I beat I beat Bads and Mads, I'm sorry, and um, and the UFC call me up, then I'll, I'll look to fight in the UFC twice mm-hmm. this year. Mm-hmm. If right. they don't, if they don't, I'll I'll defend the belt or see what's on the table. You know. Um, but as uh, being the champion, I would never like to vacate that belt and say, "Look, I'm vacating this belt. I'm going elsewhere." Mm-hmm. Unless it was the UFC, you know. So if if the UFC don't call me up after after beating Mads, then I'll defend that belt. Yeah, play, mate. Dean, it's been an absolute pleasure to have your time in the podcast. Sir. Before I let you go, I just want to offer you the floor here, mate. If you want to shout out any sponsors, associates, yep. family, friends, it's all yours, mate. On you go. Yeah, man. So. I apologise if I forget anybody, but um, <laughs> <clears throat> I would like to fight all, thank all my sponsors. Uh, they're, they're absolutely brilliant, and um, you know, without them, I wouldn't be able to stop working to train full time when I've got a fight coming up. So, I'd like to thank Capital Civils, Precision Flow Screed, um, Advanced Roofing, Advanced Health and Safety, um, Cash Monkey, Opro Math Guards. Boost the fight gear, sub guards, primal core nutrition. Brilliant, they are. Um, yeah, all of them. Uh, if I've forgotten anyone, I really do apologise. Uh, <laughs> you get so much love for me, that's what it is. Feel free to, to message me and bollock me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't like no, that. But it doesn't man. go unnoticed. <laughs> it feels a love. Hear the man. He's he's got a lot of love and he feels it for all years. Dean Truman, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the podcast, man. It's been awesome. No and, problem. Um, hopefully, Anytime. we'll get a chance to catch up post fight. But best of luck at Cage Warriors, my friend. Thank you, mate. Thanks for having me. Podcast. We'll continue with the coverage and build. It's Cage Warriors 106. Night of Champions stat card. We're chatting with all the fighters in that card. And at this time, I'm pleased to say back on the show. It's always a pleasure to have him on. It's the Hitman, the welterweight champ, Ross Houston. Ross, how you doing, my friend? How you doing, John? It's good to see you again. It's um. A lucky charm, here we are again. Yeah, that's it, man. I hope so. I hope I'm glad that's my role to be your lucky charm. I'm I'm fucking delighted to play, mate, I tell you. 
but I mean, champ, <laughs> the champ. Last yeah, time we spoke, man, you, can we get we catch up from, from last time? Because last time we spoke, you were going into Cage Warriors '98. We never got a chance to catch up post fight, and I'm sure you've recapped this a million times in other interviews. But just just talk to us, talk tell the listeners how good did that performance and taking that title. What, 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 sum it all up if you can, mate. You know what? It, um, winning the title was like it is the biggest achievement of my life in mixed martial arts. Um, I'm probably life in general, to be honest, because I'm not up to much else. Um, so yeah, that was massive. Performance-wise, I feel it was my worst performance, but my biggest win. Um, so yeah, negatives. Obviously, I, I I got into a bit more of a scrap than I would have liked. I think looking back on on it in hindsight, the advantage I had and how the fight was going, looking back on it. Mm-hmm. I think I could have just wrestled him, uh, but you know the, the inner scrapper inside of me wanted to uh, turn it into a bit of a dog <laughs> fight. So yeah. You know what? Not happy with the technical side of it, but um, moving on in my career, you know, people are going to look and they just they see me get fast finishes. They see me um, dominate people for every round, and they see me come back from adversity. Yeah. So you know what? I, I, I feel comfortable in any type of fight. It, that we get into John so um, I'm looking forward to the future and the next challenge yeah I mean the the, the biggest thing I think that you could have Ross Houston take away from that like in terms of what, what, what folk thought of you but perseverance warrior spirit maybe just like just grit and determination man you were maybe you didn't want to make it a scrap that's fair enough you want to make it more a technical fight but I mean that boy hits hard we saw how he took the title and he cracked you and you weathered the storm man that's a testament to you yeah, it's um. You know what? I think that obviously um, a lot of people have been praising me for my chin. So maybe one, I won a, uh, a lot of fans for that type of fight, but um, I lost a lot of brain cells. So I, I, I don't know. I, did, I wouldn't say I was doing it in my career, man. I got all the way up to pros and cons, you know. But yeah. considering it's for a world title and the K for a title, I think if I'm going to do it for any fight. It's, either, it's going to be that one yeah, or fight, of course. a UFC title fight, so I'll take it. Yeah, yeah, you don't want to be having, you don't want to be having that in every single fight. No, I hear you, man, absolutely. You've been immortalised now, by the way. Yeah, I saw this, uh, Cage Warriors put the, the iconic picture of all the champions and we've got to see you in there, big man, in amongst uh, some legends. How's it feel? Oh, man, it was class. I was right at the back. You need to zoom in on um, a few thousand percent, but I'm floating out on the back, man, so I was absolutely <laughs> over the moon. I was out on my... Um, my friend Mitchell um, and Louise Blitz like charity do and um, <laughs> someone tagged me in it I don't know if he saw it um, and I was like man that's absolutely class yeah, you man. know some of the names like this thing you McGregor's uh, Dan Ardy and that yeah, man. and I was, I was there floating in the background and I was like that's absolutely class so um, you know what We're never in a million years three years ago if you asked me three years ago sports uh, I'd be in the mix of them but it's, it's um, everything's came together and confidence was growing with each fight but um, you know the training level and the skill level is growing with that as well so it's, uh, it's all looking good Absolutely, man. I had it in mind that the next time we spoke, it would be. The, I know we mentioned it before. I thought you was going to be the UFC for you. I didn't think. Forgive me if I'm wrong, but I didn't think after Paterno it was going to be a title defense or whatever. Did, did Cage Warriors sit down with you or? What, 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 what was the a plan after after the victory? Well, I had you know, a few things went on, John. Um, I had, um, obviously, it was a heavy fight, so I wasn't in an immediate rush. Sure. If, you know, if it was a UFC fight, I would have jumped back in there, but so we were, we were going into the UFC fight or, or um, debut. So obviously, that's any real fight. It was um, end goal, really. Anyone, you know, who wants to, you know, be the best wants to be in the best of the, uh, best of promotion. Um, so that, I would have taken that if it came up, but I ha- I, we opened up a new gym. We, we split from the SBG affiliation and um, not not in with any bad blood, no bad no bad terms, um, just to build our own, uh, build the, like Highland, the Highlands' own name in the, Highland, in the north of Scotland and the Highlands. You know, so we, we opened up Highland Martial Arts and the HMAC. Right. So I was pretty heavy involved in that. Because we had to move to a new facility, it was absolutely run down. I had a lot of help from uh, mates and that putting that together. So I didn't, I wasn't dedicating a lot of time into the actual training. Actually, I just came back from a real heavy fight, 
and the cage warriors told me that they wanted me to uh, defend my belt in a uh, in Copenhagen yeah, against Dolby. Dolby, yeah. and I was like, "What's that about?" You know, I already, you know, I, I, I don't know the, the ins and outs, but I think he's made. God knows, I think he's managed by Graham Boylan, you know, and obviously he's not, he's, he's earned, he's, he's, he's bought and earned his uh, title shot and all that, I'm not like, not just buying that, but obviously he's a big ticket seller in Denmark, so they were looking at that, but you know what, I was like, you know, I, you know I've got the belt, uh, I ain't no mug, you know, I ain't uh, dancing uh, around for anyone, so mm -hmm. I was weighing up things and I was like, no, I'm opening I'm open up a new gym just now, um, I've won the belt. I put on a, a fight of the night, a fight of the year. Yeah. Cage Warriors fight. Listen, we, we did our... Um... Like, you know, I'm, I'm not traveling to his backyard to, uh, to do this. You know, he can wait. We'll get Glasgow. Or, you know, I'm not jeopardizing. Like, this Highland Martial Arts Center is my future after mm -hmm. um, after the competing. You know, so I came first. And I was like, you know what? Give, give him the interim title because it's a plastic belt anyway. And I said, <laughs> Alex Lahore and Dalby can fight each other. I'm not smash you enough. And then... Dalby and Lahore were like, well, you don't get to decide what happens, but you know what? <laughs> Dalby beat Lahore, and I'm going to smash Dalby, so that's exactly what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> that's class, man. No, just when you said fight of the year, because we did our um, little end of year award show, and we have guy, a lot of the guys from the States who are maybe not familiar with Cage Warriors, but they were throwing in, you know, their, their UFC picks or the Bellator picks or whatever. And I was like, you guys need to check out Cage Warriors, man. Paterno and Houston, it's just an all-out war, back and forth. Maybe not, you didn't want it to be back and forth. I totally hear you, man. But I was like, see, even if you don't know these guys, sit and watch as a neutral, this is a class fight, man. So for what it's worth... You, you got my vote, big man, when it came to fight the year, because it was, it was an absolute, sorry to keep harping on about it, man, but it was, like, it was, it was a scrap that was up there with the best of them, any MMA promotion for that year, like, I'll, I'll rack yeah, it up. It was, a, it was a good scrap, it, it was good fun to watch back, a bit, a bit cringy, like, with some of the stuff I'm doing at some point, but you know what, it's, it's, um, it's hindsight, isn't it, man, Aye. it's always a lot easier a few months later when you watch shooting your arm thing, yeah, so I find that. Absolutely, man. Well, listen, tell us a wee bit more about uh, Highland Mars and Art Centre. So, are we still in Inverness then? Has, have you changed location much? I've actually found that I've lost it. And then... Oh, sorry, scrambled. mate. I lost, I lost you. Yeah. Before I got punched, you know, so that's you know, that should have been a bit tighter. Sorry, mate, I lost you there. Can you say it again? <laughs> was it uh, the Paterno bit? Last thing I had was uh, you were saying Paterno. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah. Yeah. You know, I, was, I, I said I was watching back on the Paterno fight, and I cringed at some moments just because, you know, like the moment like just before I got punched, uh, uh -huh. got that big shot. Yeah. I um, you know, had the Kamora locked up, and I rushed him out, taken rushed, pushing up the ground a pound, and lost position. When really I should have just made a settled position and just punched his head in. But uh, we scrambled, he got back, and then he he hit me with that big teeth. You know, so it's um. It's, uh, like I said, hindsight's a good thing. That's it, man. It is hindsight. You're right. No, I was just asking about Highland Martial Arts Centre. So are you still in Inverness? Was that much a location change? Or? Yeah, we're in Inverness. We're only about three, four minutes uh, away from our old gym down. And down is it, is it still the still the same crew? Area. Still like Cam Cheng and stuff? Is it still the same guys? Yeah, man. Same crew. Same crew. Uh, in it, man. We've got, um, it's uh, We've got Aidan McKenzie, who's a um, J. Brown belt from the States. Uh, um, he's going to shoot me for not knowing all the, the names, the Jiu Jitsu names and all that. But you know, he uh, comes from a really good uh, background and heritage. So uh, we've got him over and he's fast, man. He's doing a lot of the kids and the, the teens, BJJ. He's a good, 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 good guy to have in the club. Uh, real positive, man. So uh, yeah, the, the, place is, the place is meant to be honest, John. Um, I have to how things are going. It was, a, it was a risk when we first moved because it was uh, to us. Uh, it's probably about four times bigger than the old place, you know, so like right. financially it's always a risk, but of course, it's right. paid off and the numbers have came, so we're buzzing. Well, that's it, man. Next time I'm up in Inverness, I'll need to jump down in the mats and come check you boys out. I'm on the shelf just now, big man. I've got a torn meniscus and I've got sciatica, so all I'm doing is getting fat and I don't like it, Ross. It's not pleasant. Ah, uh, but, but at least, um, nah, man, you'll come back from that. I've seen, I've seen you compete, bro. You get, uh, Keep that positive mindset. Um, you know, I had a few injuries going up to that last fight, and I was working with a high-level physio, and he says he's um, in terms of people coming back from injuries, like, the mindset is a massive thing. I, and I agree. I think there's some kind of um, they haven't proven it, but I think there's a massive link between 
you, you, your mind and like, the physical effects it can have on the body. Right. You know, so if you, if you believe that your body is going to improve, if you, even if you get a massage, if you think it's going to help your body, it mm-hmm. will help the body. If you're going to yeah. like some kind of uh, some kind of therapy, and you're like, ah, oh, this ain't going to work, then it probably won't work. You know, mm-hmm. so I think they, they work in sync. So obviously, it's a lot easier said than done, man. But um, yeah, it's certainly works for me. No, I, I, I believe that as well. Like it's like um, you know, back in the day when I was when I was a student and I was working like a little part time jobs. If I felt ill and then I thought about, oh no, I'm going to be ill. Like you would make yourself sick just by constantly, you know what I mean? Like constantly thinking about it. Almost like even though you're not physically ill, <laughs> it sounds weird, but yeah. yeah. Well, the mind's a powerful thing, man. You got to yeah. be, um, you got to be careful of your thoughts. Like I don't know, there's a saying: know your thoughts. Um become your words and your words become your actions you know yeah man absolutely I believe it um, did you get a chance to see Bellator Birmingham whenever what was it past weekend um, is that the one with Fabian Edwards uh, yes man oh what a finish that was he eh? the up kicks beautiful yeah man that was class wasn't it? I'm no, actually away down leaving the, I'm away down on Sunday to train with them lot so um, nice man yeah, I'll be uh, asking about that is it a wee, because you've got your family's there as well, right? So is it Birmingham a wee bit of a homecoming for you, I guess, as well? Uh, well, you know, I've got a lot of friends down there. My family's right. all based in North Scotland. That's why right. I moved up to North Scotland. Oh, but, uh, I've got a lot of old mates uh, down there. Uh, I'm still close to them, man. So it's good to get a touch with them, boys. I'm actually missing out on one of my, my, my best mate, um, Josh Griffin. I play, play face with him. He's a uh, stag, you know. But I weighed up. I was going to go everything from space for, but then I was like, you know what? It's a week in Prague, and I was like, I can't even afford, I'm not financially, I, I, physically, I can't afford a week of training. It's yeah, close to a fight yeah, of, of course. Attitude, let alone a week of temptation and drinking and stuff yeah. like that. You know, so <laughs> yeah. I was like, he, he understood, and you know, he knows the crap, man. So it was like, it's a hard it, choice, but obviously it's the obvious choice as well. What's it like with uh, Fabian and Leo, man? What, what are they like? On the, I imagine just like powerful striking. That's what I thought. That's, well, that's what yeah, we see in the cage. Yeah, they're um, you got Fabian, you got Leon, you got Tom Breeze down there. They're, they're, they're real technical guys, you know. I think uh, it's like you're saying, Leon, and Fabian, they're they're, they're they're chilled guys, man. You know, they're, they're and um, you know, a lot, they look like like Fabian just looks like a obviously just straight up knockout in his fights, but he's um, he's all he's well rounded. You know, he's good at everything. To be honest, oh, um, yeah. like the Chadwick fight, that was yeah. the one that impressed me because I was expecting a flying knee or a, you know that left body kick. And what he did was he just controlled yeah. him, pressed him against the cage, had his back, just controlled the fight. Exactly. When well, you think about it, you know, he's training with UFC middleweight Tom Breeze, man. So yeah, um, exactly. He, he's, he's a phenomenal striker and grappler, so he's going to be um, picking up all that stuff. And obviously, success breeds success. He's brothers with Leon, you know. So I'm very class, I'm going to be working a lot with um, Leon when I go down. Because um, he's a good thinker, man. He's, smart, he's a smart fighter as well, Leon. You know, you see it against Gunny Nelson. Oh, yeah. um, so I'm going to pick, pick his brain we're going to get some training in. I think I'm going to get some sparring with uh, uh, Fabian and like, Jai Herbert who's playing on the same um, card as me when I'm down there awesome man no, and uh, you know, they, got, they got guys like Michael Eunice uh, Nathaniel and all that I don't know Eunice but I was just going to say like Bellator Birmingham um, was that not the Raymond Daniels the tornado kick or whatever it was did you see that one yeah, man, that was, that was quite cool. He's, a, he's, a, he's <laughs> Raymond Daniels, one of the best strikers in the world, man. And they put him in with, like, some amateur. You know what, there's, there's a lot of kickboxing titles about. They put him in with, like, some... When I heard amateur, like, it was, like, amateur kickboxing world champion, I was like, that yeah. sounds about as Mickey Mouse as you can get. Don't get me wrong, the boy's probably pretty, pretty solid, you know, but yeah. the difference between being a, a solid amateur striker and then going in against Raymond Daniels. So I just hope he's getting paid a good bit of coin, man, because that's taken about five years off his life at least. <laughs> no doubt. Very fast, like, but it's one of them, isn't it? It's, oh, it's, it's, it's something to add to the high rate as well. And if you've got a guy like that in there, man, it's. I started out in Taekwondo I years ago. I, I, I love I, seeing I, all that. I'll, I'll grind them out and shake them unconscious. <laughs> yeah, let's see it, man. Oh, I see that scrap for sure. That'll be class. Let's get into the champions, man, because we've not even spoken about this champ versus champ. We spoke a wee bit about Dolby with the interim belt. I'm sure you're well familiar with it. Well, is that how we look at it, right? You don't, is it it's just, this is your first title defence then? Is that, is that the idea? No, I'm really joking, man. This, <laughs> is, a, this is a crap, to be honest, you know. Yeah. Dalby's just another guy, man, and he's got that UFC name tag. It doesn't bother me in the slightest, but it, 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 I like, I like, I get, um, 
I'm hungry for it because he's got that tag and I know what it, you know what people will think once to be him, which is going to happen. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's just it's just a nice, uh, it's a tasty meal next mm-hmm. in line, man. So mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to getting in there. Good man. Uh, are you? It's smart to be prepared, obviously. No, without giving too much away. How how do you see it going down, mate? I I, I see me. Um, he he says he's uh, can Houston ha- handle the pressure, and um, my reply is like, can he handle the pressure, man? Because if he thinks he's going to push me back, he's got another thing coming. And um, you know, he, everyone goes on about his cardio, but if, to be honest, in, if you're backing someone up and you're on the front foot and someone's dancing around the outside, um, it's, you can you can fight for an hour, but it's different when someone's pressuring you. So it'll. We'll see what happens when he's got someone who's stronger than him, fitter than him, and um, aggressive as well. So um, let, let's see what happens. I'm going to dominate him, John. I'm going to get that. I'm going, I'm going 9 you know, June 29th, and then uh, uh, we're going to the UFC, and then we're going to keep our head down, work hard in the UFC, and then get out of the ranks. That's class, man. I can't wait to see it. Um, did you see uh, Cage Warriors in Cardiff, Jack Shore and um, our boy Scott Malone? I did, man. You know, it's, um, it was a tough one. Um, I'm good mates with Scott Malone. And you know, I I, I like Jack Shaw as well. I, I'm his dad, Richard. Um, like I, I yeah. started my King George career in Wales. You know, so I've always been chatting to him and I've seen him. Well, obviously, I was back with my boy Scott Malone. Um, he's been, been Scottish, and um, it was always going to be a tough fight. He did. He, I think he gave Jack the toughest test that he's had so far. But um, I just, you know, what? I think it's just unlucky for Scott because he's. Um, it's just unlucky that he's got Jack Shaw in his division at this this current time, you know, because I think he's one of these guys who, who you know, he pops up now and again. He's, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. it would be like a UFC title contender in the future. Oh, yeah. no doubt. No doubt. And they're, they're both so, so know, humble like, about you know, it as well. It depends, what, it depends like, it's like, kind of like what, if you think about the World Cup, you know, it depends who you get seeded, you know, who's who's good at that time, you know. It's, mm-hmm. um, it, it's just, you know, Scott's world class. Jack Shaw's like world world class, and it's just them. Um, he just came up against him. Like, did you see some people get easy rides, um, belts and all? It just depends who's there at that current time, doesn't it? To be honest, and who's been signed and whatnot. So, um, Scott will be back. I was sparring, sparring with him down at um, down at MXP in last weekend, and he's still sharp and he's hungry. I think, you know, uh, yeah, he's hungry to go again. I think he's out soon again. Uh, obviously, that, that's it. Um, his stuff to um, say. <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm glad to hear he's back on the, back in the saddle because I don't know if you saw some of his posts, and he was quite right in saying it. You know, um, and you all know this as well. I'm preaching the choir. You know, fighters, you need to look after your own pay, your own sponsor, and a lot of times you're just kind of left to, to sort to yourself. And if you don't, it's like tough luck, isn't it? It's a hard fucking existence for you guys, man. It is what it is. Um, you know what? There's um, there's up, you know, pay better money, but you, it depends. So, you're not going to be rich, you know, unless you, like, you make it big in the big promotions. Um, but then, it's a tough one, you know, it's a tough one, because we all want to get in UFC, and k is the number one promotion to get in UFC. Yeah. Um, but you just got to struggle now, you know, and you'll you thrive later on. I suppose, man. I suppose you just got to keep making the grind. There's nothing else you can do. And, like no sugar daddy's going to come it's along and fund you, right? You know, it's, it's, the sport's hundred, like a million times more mentally tougher than it is physically tough. You know, and that's why you, you know I'm like, um, oh, on, window just up there. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm like John. You, 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 all about mindset. I, I don't do anything different to people when I'm training. We all do the same stuff: boxing, wrestling, cage work, whatever. But I believe I'm uh, the best in the world on fight night when it comes uh, to mindset yeah. and I won't be beaten by anyone absolutely man well, that, that's, well, that's like so important oh 100% uh, we've spoke about what happens after Dolby it's, it's after the UFC then is that the plan end of 2019 is that what we're looking at you know I, I, I'm not, I don't want to look past Dolby even though I don't, I'm confident I'm going to beat him um, whatever happens happens but UFC is is the dream and um, we'll be doing you know, we'll sit down with management after beat Dalby and then just 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 see see what's on the table, I guess. Um, but you know what? Um, people have been signed with less under their belt, before, yeah. you know. So yep. just we, we'll do, all we can do is win, John, and um, take things as it comes. But 
That's it, man. I mean, you're knocking at the door, so I hope when the, the time comes, you you kick down the door, mate, <laughs> for one of a better phrase. But what happened is that? Well, I mean, whatever happens, I just want to tell you, man, like, I, I, I love following your stuff. I, I, I've loved it since we, we, we first charted back at Thomas Jessing on top, and you're a true warrior, my man. That fight at Cage Warriors was a real testament to that. And I want you to thank you again for, for giving us your time on, on the podcast, my friend. I mean, that's, um, it's a pleasure being uh, thanks for being to me as well, man. I like doing this stuff. Like I said, it's a... It's a good omen. I like, I like, um, <laughs> I like, I like briefly talking about it. You know, yeah. some people don't like it, but um, it's, it's a big part of it, man. You don't even I see some people talk before fights. So, you know, like everyone's got techniques, different techniques before fights. Some people are like, uh, you know, he's good at this. Uh, I just want it to be a good fight, man. You know, I don't want to get caught in this position because he's been, you know, I'm like, nah, screw that. I'm, I'm, I, there's not a, there's not a chance I'm losing this fight. There's no possibility at all. Um, and you can like, trust me. We'll be on the we'll be speaking to each other after this Derby fight. Nine and nine. Bigger thing. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Last bit of business for you go, mate. Just to give you the floor, if you want to shout out the sponsors, family, friends, the new gym, anyone you like, mate. It's all yours, Ross. All right. Yeah. Cheers to uh, all, every single one of my sponsors. Um, you know, like I said, HMAC's recently opened up, first of all, massive shout out to our three main sponsors. We've got GM Leach, uh, we've got Blackbridge Furnishing, and we've got HRL. Them guys have really helped out financially opening up the place. Um, personal sponsors, thanks to Sunset, the girls down in Elgin, uh, Phil Supreme, Matty down in Liverpool. Um, I've got a spray car, Rico, he's, he's at my back for a long time now. Um I've got A1 Fight Gear, Tatami, who are a big sponsor now. Pretty cool getting sponsored by them. Yeah, he's awesome, he's a big name. So I was pretty chuffed. Um, yeah, um, Lee down in Wales, the Tatami guys. Um, and, ah, oh, man, you know what? Thanks to every single one of the sponsors. <laughs> um, I, I get punched in the head, in the head a lot, man. I'm sorry, I love you. We'll let you off, I'll just finish the training session, forgive me. <laughs> That's it, man. Absolute class. Ross, the Hitman Houston, always a pleasure. Come back on any time, but best of luck in the air, champions. Right. Cheers, brother. Take it easy. Top man. Hello. Welcome to Martial Arts Chat Podcast. On the episode, we're continuing with our coverage and build of Cage Warriors 106 Night of Champions takes place in London and it's time for the round table now joining us this evening returning to the show from News from MMA it's Mr Kieran Colby Kieran how are you doing sir? Yeah uh, thanks for having me back on mate it's always a pleasure to, to get involved in the uh, Martial Arts Tribe podcast, podcast. Uh, got a fantastic, uh, fantastic card to break down. Yeah, man, delighted to have you on for sure. And also delighted to finally get him on the show. It's my man, Mr. John Sloan. John, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, I'm brilliant. Thanks very much for having me on. Apologies, I've, I've messed you about a few times in the past. Uh, but yeah, I was actually saying this to my dad when I told him I was coming on here. No one no one I really interact with socially uh, here in Scotland really really knows anything about MMA especially regional MMA yeah, uh, so yeah I'm excited to kind of geek out to fight with you guys who <laughs> uh, know what you're talking about <laughs> that's it man you're in good company for sure um, and always welcome from MMA Huddle it's Mr John Ferguson John how you doing my friend I'm always good gents weekend of fights just happened and we've got another weekend of fights coming up so I couldn't be happier Happy days for sure, man. And I'll give you probably one of the biggest cards of the year. Definitely one of the biggest cards in the UK for a while. It takes place here at London. Um, lots of Cage Warrior belts on the line. They are champions, of course. Um, but let's start with something that was announced, I suppose, fairly recently. Not for a title. Um, title implications, maybe, you could say, with uh, Lahore and Khalid uh, getting matched. Um, Aaron, I'm a big fan of. He's kind of always been on the cusp maybe of a Cage Warriors title short I know he had the, the double fights with uh, with Houston um, back in the day um, and the horror as we know lost out to Dolby and Colby Hagen so likely to be an exciting contest we'll say that let's start with maybe Kieran on this one um, Kieran uh, give me your thoughts on a well to wait fight yeah this, just one's good. this one's a tough one to pick obviously uh, Khalid's had those two fights against Houston which he lost both times so you could say even if he wins this fight, he's not guaranteed a title shot if Houston retains the title. Then you've got Lahore, is you know, he's beat everyone else in the division, like Nathan Jones and some of the more experienced guys in the division. But if Dolby wins, does he really get the title shot? So it's a weird one to predict uh, and a weird one for the sort of implications of the division. But um, I, I see Lahore doing this one. I think his kickboxing is phenomenal. 
Um, he's beaten, uh, like I said, uh, Nathan Jones, who's a fantastic kickboxer. He trains my brother quite a bit, uh, quite every month. So uh, it's just all around kickboxer. He's got a decent ground game as well. It's just a matter of can he keep his um, sort of chin clean, keep his guard up, and make sure that he doesn't take any uh, silly, silly shots. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think Lahore takes it, but um, taking away nothing from Aaron Cleed, who's a fantastic fighter. But yeah. I, I just think he's always like one step away from a title shot. I think this is another, another step away. Yeah, man, you, you could be right, and and Aaron's uh, uh, and speaking to him and like the likes his crew, like Lewis Long and stuff, they they're all openly tell you that he um, he struggles early in a fight, and then depending on how it goes, he either grows as the fight goes on or or he, he sort of stagnates there. Um, I, I mean, he quite openly talks to me, and I'm sure John Sloan will, will get, get to you as well. Like um, confidence seems to be a, a, a make or break with him. Then, uh, but how, how do you see this this one going down, John? Uh, it's it's a really difficult one to predict. Uh, I think it's a fantastic fight. I think it's it's a good it's a good show for Lahore on behalf of Cage Warriors that he's been given this kind of this kind of level of a fight just after being knocked out for the interim title. I think yeah. it's a huge statement from the organisation that they're even putting him in this position. Uh, no disrespect meant at all. You know, I, I really do think it just depends where Khalid is me- mentally. You know, we're, we're forgetting that he's just he's just gone through a training camp to fight Tom Kong Watson. Uh, oh, so, you know, I, I know they train really hard over at the uh, Matt Academy in Wales, so it really depends physically how strenuous his training had been for that and mentally what, what that fight falling through did to him. Because I know he's a guy, like you said, that does have to kind of build himself up emotionally to go in and fight. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, I would be really happy for Aaron if he won because I do feel bad for him after what the fight falling through with Tom Watson nice, in yeah. April, especially in his hometown. Um, but I've got to agree with Kieran on this, you know, I think... He's a great grappler, Aaron, but every single problem that that he could possess, Lahore has already been able to deal with successfully in the past. Um, And yeah, I I hate to say it because I really do like Khalid like yourself. Um, But yeah, I I see Lahore manage to keep this fight on the feet uh, and uh, win via decision because, as everyone knows, Khalid is unusually durable. Oh, absolutely, and I, forgot, I totally forgot. You're absolutely right, Tom Con. Tom Con Watson, your best friend, eh, John? He, uh, <laughs> wants to leave you hanging, man. <laughs> Fuck is that? Well, I, 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 um, I actually met him at the at the Cage Warriors one hundred four way. What was he saying? Uh, yeah, I, 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 I shook his hand. I don't think he really knew who I was. Right. Uh, but uh, but yeah, I think I think that, I hope that's the air cleared anyway. But uh, I, I still don't think you'll fancy doing an interview with me. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Oh, okay, who cares? <laughs> uh, John Ferguson, your thoughts? Well, to it, Bill, sir. Uh, well, see now everyone's going with Lahore. I'm going to go back, uh, Aaron. Then you know, I'm going <laughs> to give. I'm going to give Aaron some love. Good for you. Um, I, I, like say, Aaron went twice with the champ, and what you got to remember is one of them was a short notice step in, like True. the day, but like the day of or Aaron. day before. Sorry. So um, to go against Ross twice, decisions. It shows, like you say, like John said, uh, Sloaney there was saying, he's durable. But the thing is, um, Lahore, I think it's a bit quick coming back, in my opinion, man. Like, man, he got knocked out in, when was he got knocked out? In March. Man, that's, March 18th. That's, that's three, three months, man. Like, that is, you're not, you get in the standard 90 day protocol, like, no fights, no strikes. So in, within that, within basically 12 weeks, he's went from, a spar sparring. He's had to spar obviously for this fight. Sure. So he's going heavy, probably heavy sparring sessions. He's getting cracked in the head again. How much is that chin recovered in in twelve weeks? You know that's that's something that kind of plays on my mind quite a bit when I, I see stuff like point. that. Right. Um, you know, because obviously weight cutting. When you make the weight, you've got to dehydrate your body a bit. You're stepping into a fight. If I'm Aaron, it's a free round fight. I'm going to go because he's. I'm going to go. I'm going to go for Lahore. Mm-hmm. If I'm honest with you, I'm going to get really nice and close and just. Get get some strikes in, shoot for the grappling aspect, and try to get the fight to the ground. But you know, don't forget, Aaron trains with Lou Long, and we all know Lou Long's a, oh, yeah. a nasty guy on the feet. You know, nasty. Mm. He's got some absolute lethal striking. So let's not uh, let's not forget that Aaron has got a horrible training partner in Lou Long, who's also a yoga Jedi master as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> So yeah, let's sort of fit. So I'm going to go with Aaron. I'm going to go Aaron. I think Aaron's going to get it. I, I think you might even get. A, I'm going to. I'm going to put everyone up the uh, up here with a TKO. I think you might because Alex. Nice. Man, I'm I'm, dur- I'm I'm curious about that coming back so quick, man. 
Yeah, it's a very good point about uh, recovery time for sure. Because I, as got you got to appreciate it, man. You got to respect how how you know the can the chin recover, and yeah, like you said, with weight cutting and everything else. And is it sparring? And is it sparring with no strikes? Come on, it's it's a it's a huge a huge fight. Okay, it's not for a title, but it's got huge implications in it against a very tough opponent. Yeah, man, point well made. Make a champion, so so let's talk title fights. Um, and we'll start with the middleweight belt. James Webb been on a tear here, man. In Cage Warriors, grows with every fight. Finishes galore. Gets a tough opponent though, man, Frederick, but it's set for a great scrap. Um, let's start with John Sloan on this one. Webb, Frederick, for the middleweight crown, how do you see it going down, my friend? Uh, I think James Webb wins, and I think he wins by submission. Uh, I mean, that being said, he also showed in his in his fight, who did he fight? Was it Jason Radcliffe at Cage Warriors 99? And he landed a beautiful right hand to put him away. Um, oh, so yeah, sure. I, I'm yeah, going cool. with James Webb. I think... The kind of thing that makes me lean towards James in this fight is the fact that he only won the belt back in March and he's keen to get in, in, in really, really quickly, which I think says a lot about his confidence. When you look at Cage Warriors champions, it's not unusual for guys to take long layoffs to wait for UFC opportunities to come, you know, late late notice pullouts, that kind of thing, especially mm-hmm. on the European shows like Stockholm was announced. James Webb could have could have quite easily tried to tried to get on there. Mm-hmm. So I think that's a big that's a big show of confidence that he's keen to just rattle these wins off. Uh, and yeah, I see him getting it done by submission. Yeah, man, the show continues, I guess, with the, the submission show, I guess, with, mm-hmm. with James Webb. Um, John Ferguson, what about you, man? How do you see it? Is it and you or and still? Ah, oh, I can't see anything other than James Webb win. Um, mm. I like, look, his opponent, um, Nefeas Frederick, he is a good opponent, but I think, it's a, I think it's a big step up for Nefeas, if I'm honest with you. Mate. If you look at the guys he's fought in his past, it, it, it's it's a, James a big step up in regards to even on a regional level for him. I suppose like the toughest win that he had uh, for each round was maybe Avi Jack. Avi Jack's a pretty... Um, just a, He's a tough guy to put away and tough guy to stop, so he got a decision with him, but... Stylistically, I think that James on the feet can can handle what Friedrich's going to offer, but then on the ground, I think James can absolutely take it take it to another level, grind them out a bit, get the cardio going. Obviously, they they renamed the gym Team KF and all yeah, that. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah, you know, it, it, I, I think you know maybe see James Webb in Copenhagen on twenty eighth for September. You never know, making a debut for the UFC. You, I mean, it's, it's certainly on the cards. I don't think he's in any rush, though. I haven't spoke to him like yeah. a couple of times. He mm-hmm. does. I know other guys like like Sir Ross and like Sir maybe Dolby, who we'll get to later. You know that that the UFC is almost always on their minds with, with the next fight. But with James, man, he's just he's he's so um, casual with uh, with you know looking further down further down the road. And I think he's he's happy to keep racking up um, racking up wins here at Cage Warriors. And he's improving in every fight as well, man. Every time I see him, I mean, he's always been a monster grappler. Anyway. Anyway, any, but um, you know, he, he continues to evolve, and that's that's kind of the name of the game, I suppose, at, at this stage in his career. Um, Kieran, what about you, my friend? Your thoughts on the middleweight title fight? Uh, I'm going to sort of put the trend here. I'm going to say it's going to be an new. Um, oh. I know this. Yeah, I know this is Dias Frederick's uh, Cage Warriors debut. Uh, he but he does have a, a pretty good record, seven and two. The majority of those wins are, are by finish, uh, with you know vicious ground and pound. Um, I, I don't see that. Changing here, I don't. I think Cage Warriors putting him into a title fight on his uh, debut for the promotion shows that Graham Boylan and the matchmakers over at Cage Warriors have got that they, they see something in him that possibly others haven't, and they think he could be a credible threat to James Webb. Or the flip side of that is that they think it's going to be an easy fight with James Webb. But I, I prefer the latter. Um, I don't think you pick, pick easy fights for your champions. Um, but I think this is going to be a really tough one. I think even if James takes it to the floor, where we know. He's got a fantastic ground game, obviously, with submission wins left, right and centre. I think it's still going to be a tough fight and he's it's, it's always, always at risk there and getting caught by a heavy elbow or a heavy hand and uh, losing the fight by TKO, which is where I see the fight going after the... Uh, Frederick taking it in round three by uh, ground and pound. Wow, fair play, man. I mean, it's it, like it's that why we love the sport, isn't it, man? It, anything can happen, and yeah, man, a good good call. Dean Truman, Mads Burnell, obviously got a lot of buzz around it. Um, Truman coming through those um, to eliminator fights, Aiden Lee, Lewis Monarch sticks out in the mind, and I'm sure Mads Burnell, we all know about him and what he brings that Japanese necktie. Um, let's start with John Ferguson on this one. John, your thoughts on Truman versus uh, Mads Burnell? Uh, it's annoying because I like both of the guys. Got both of them really well, um, but uh, I'm, I'm probably going to uh, I'm probably going to go with um, Dean. Still, I think he can. I think he can hold off Mads. Um, Mads done well coming back, obviously from the UFC disappointment. Where he wasn't fought, 
he wasn't like he just lost to Aaron uh, Arnold Allen. Like it, it was, he was winning the fight and then just like a silly mistake. Um, he, he got he's got caught a couple of times since you know since coming back out in, from Cage Warriors. He's got stronger grappling, but I just think that Dean, as an all round guy, he showed in that kind of tournament thing. Yeah, just pro progress leaps and bounds were just Absolutely. insane. And, um, like, obviously, he, you know, everyone was in a shout within the tournament, but he just elevated himself. And obviously, he's got Jimmy and Dan around him. And he's just got some beautiful people around him helping him and evolve into what I, I find to be a fantastic featherweight guy um, in the UK scene. So I'm probably going to say Dean Truman still uh, would maybe would not be surprised of a decision, but Dean could catch uh, Mads on the feet and uh, stop him, maybe. I mean, it's it's an exciting fight either. I think this is probably the closest call, uh, closest fight to call uh, out of all the fights for sure. Because yeah, I'm a sucker for momentum, and Truman's got all of that, and uh, Mads has got skills that other people don't have. I remember when he was up here for Soma, and we were already already knew about uh, or watch out for this guy's neckties. And I think that's how he took. I forget who he was fighting. I'm pretty sure that's how he won the fight then. And um, he's got that in his locker, man. And you got to respect that. He's got he's got mad grappling skills for sure. Yeah, it's a close close fight to call, man. Um, Kieran, I'm going to talk to you about now. Burnell and Truman, who's walking out of the featherweight champ? Uh, I think Truman keeps the belt. Um, I, I caught, I interviewed Dean before um, before the Soren pull out. Well done, Soren. Back by the way, he's managed to uh, put on like two divisions. Well done, fella. <laughs> 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 but uh, yeah, I spoke to Dean, and the pull out didn't phase him at all. They were, nah. he spoke to his manager as well, and they were well prepared for. Uh, Sorin pulling out. They heard rumours that Sorin was fighting and stuff after that fight, so um, they, they weren't b- bothered by Mads stepping in. Uh, not not so much on short notice, but a change in opponent nonetheless. Oh, yeah. um, so you know that's that's not bothered him. And the one thing Dean always brings to a fight is pressure. He will pressure an opponent and force him into a mistake. And we've seen mm-hmm. that Benel is susceptible to making mistakes. Um, we've also thought that's how he beats Aiden. Uh, that's how Truman beat uh, Aiden Lee the last mm-hmm. fight, where he just constant pressure and I think that's what's going to happen here I think Burnell's not going to be able to cope with Truman on the feet he's going to shoot him for a takedown and just maybe get caught with something either in that way in or you know or just when he gets to the ground uh, Truman's going to pull something out of somewhere that we've not seen before um, I, I think I think Truman's going to do it I think he's got to, he's got to show people here that you know don't don't overlook me I am the champion yeah. um, j- just because I don't have the highest name value doesn't mean I'm not a worthy champion you know put, put some respect on my name now you've you screwed me over too much now um, you know, time show me some respect. I think, I think Truman finishes it. Finishes it. Uh, fair comment, mate. What, finally, John, what about you? I, I knew or I'm still for you, mate. Yeah, I'm gonna make a hat trick and go with uh, go with Dean Truman on this one. I think. I mean, I remember not too long ago before Dean Truman fought Corin Eaton to kind of start that three fight win streak where he's on and like you guys say, you know, getting better every fight. I remember people saying he was done and he was average. And he was past it back then, and he's just come on leaps and bounds. Yeah. I think what Kieran said really rings true about uh, uh, about Mads. It's just that he does crumble under the pressure, and I think the, the main thing that, uh, that that Dean Truman can do to, to kind of bring that out of him is just his relentless output. It's it's kind of obviously he's completely different, but his output and the way he can pressure people almost reminds me of Max Holloway in a little in a way. You know, just doesn't give doesn't doesn't give people a space any space to breathe, and then breaks them mentally as well as physically. Uh, but yeah, I think this is probably the tightest one to call in the card. Mads Burnell, I think he is UFC caliber. I think they both are. He was unlucky, you know. He beat Mike Santiago in a dominant performance, then was doing really well against Arnold Allen. So he, he went one and two in the UFC, but I think he was really unlucky to be cut. Um, but yeah, I, I think Dean Truman will get it done uh, in the third round via TKO. Fair play, man. Um, like we said, so many great title fights. We're spoiled for choice, man. You get Jack Grant, Jay Harbour, um, one twenty-five belts, obviously on the line. Light heavyweight belts on the line as well. Um, but gents, let's wrap things up because it's main event and it's undisputed welterweight belt. Ross Houston had the fight of the year last year, in my opinion, when he took that strap potato. What a scrap, man! Um, and Dolby obviously did the business in front of his own people. Both fighters have told me that with a victory takes them to the UFC. So let's hear the panel's thoughts. We'll start with John Sloan on this one. John, your thoughts. Who's walking out the undisputed champ? 
<laughs> it's, it's, it's an interesting one. I'm kind of in a difficult position here because, oh, well, you know, John, Scott, Scott, Scottish bias. But obviously, <laughs> I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to root against uh, against Ross. But this will be his hardest fight fight to date. I think if he shows up the same way he did against Paterno, it's going to be a no contest and it's going to be a very dominant performance by Dalby. I think what Ross said in his interview with me really rung true, and that was that you know his, his win over Stefano Paterno. That was his biggest win to date, but his worst performance to date also. Yeah. Uh, I think he tried too much to kind of entertain the crowd and make it an exciting fight, whereas I think if he'd just been a bit more smarter and, and shown that maturity that he's shown in previous fights, he could have just kind of used that strength that he, that he possesses to kind of hold hold Paterno down and, and win, a, win a more dull decision. Do you but, think uh, he, uh, but, sorry interrupt me, do you think he got caught up maybe in the moment with that title fight? Yeah, yeah, perhaps, perhaps. I think he, I think he just underestimated Stefano Paterno. I think that was a problem. Right. I think he underestimated his power because Paterno has has that campaign where he doesn't cut weight and, and he really didn't think that Paterno could give him anything that he hadn't already dealt with, uh-huh. uh, which was which, which he was you know harshly proved otherwise. Oh, right. uh, but yeah, I, I do fancy Rosh's chances in this fight. I mean, I think he's going to be the naturally stronger guy. I think if he can close the distance. Uh, and kind of press Dalby against the cage, then he can win by decision. I will say that, you know, I think both fighters know coming into this fight that they're not going to walk out of this unscathed. I mean, I'm sure yeah. Ross knows that too. I mean, the first round early, Dal- Dalby's kind of speed, time, and movement is that of a featherweight, but he's fighting in the welterweight division. It's just, it, 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 it's unbelievable. I think whoever does win this fight goes to the UFC, but I see a strong start from Dalby. And a strong finish from Ross uh, and Ross to win via unanimous decision. Fair play, man. Um, Kieran, this main event, who are you picking in this one? Uh, I'm going to uh, have Dolby, man. I think Dolby showed in his last fight that his striking is something you don't want to mess around with. Uh, he's he's going to finish here. He finished Lahore with that, uh, that big right hand, obviously. Yeah. Um, and also, I've been watching some of his training videos he's been putting on Instagram and stuff. And obviously, you, know, you can gloss things up in the internet. But I was really uh, impressed with his kicking style. Um, I think that's something we're going to have to really look out for, him throwing kicks that maybe Houston's not going to expect and something that it's, it's going to catch Houston off. Um, I've, t- I've taken nothing away from Ross, though. I think he's definitely going to get to the UFC one day, but I just don't think it's yet. I think he loses his fight, but he wins the next three or four, and th- that's when he gets his call up. Um, but I, I see Hughes, uh, probably taking this one. Um, I think he's just got that experience edge as well, obviously being in the UFC before. Uh, he took Darren Hill to a decision, like uh, took Darren Hill to a draw. Sorry, oh, oh, well, with a broken hand as well. Let's not yeah. forget. Um, so I think I think Dolby takes it. I think it's going to be. I think it's going to go the distance. I think Dolby's going to bring him into the championship rounds where Houston's only been there the once before. That was against Paterno in that hell of a fight, and I think that's where. Dolby's going to finish, so I'm going to say fifth round KO for Dolby. Oh, KO, okay. oh, man. Wow, spectacular. Finally, John, who you walk, who have you got walking out the undisputed champ in this one? I've got a split decision going on this one. I just think it's going to be a bit of an ugly fight um, where it's going to be really horrible rounds to score. Um, oh, man, I am so torn even still. I, I <laughs> it's still hard, isn't it? It's, hard, it's such a hard <laughs> one. I might have to do some more tape study on him because for me, Dalby, you know, after talking to him from – after speaking with him after he's had his kid and his family, it's like a new perspective on him. Yes, 100%. He's just – uh, and that you know, it's like a new fire. It's a new view because, as we all know, he had the the kind of mental health issue stuff yes. prior in the past. Then it's almost like he's clean the slate and he's going forward now. And um, he's a dangerous man. He looks he looks really good, Nick. He's starting to just get that rhythm. Ross Houston again, young up and coming, great talent, superb talent. Can grind you guy. Can grind guys out. Um, I, I'm going to. If I, if I do, if I pick someone now, I'm going to go Ross just quickly off the top of my head. Uh, but I'm going to go back and watch this, and I'll probably end up going back and forth between the two of them. But I want to Ross split decision. One reason I feel Ross for the split decision, I think Ross will and can close the fight down. Like uh, uh, you were saying there with the kicks that Ross, uh, so that Nick, Nicholas Dalby throws, there's potential to get them cat, catch kicks, you know, and catch kicks can lead to takedowns, yeah. lead to the grappling exchanges, and that can obviously look favourable from a judging perspective, especially if you've got the opponent against the cage and you're winning that side of things, and even if you get them down for a little bit, little things like that can can look um, good on a ref uh, at a judge's scorecard. So Ross maybe split decision, but I think you'll ha- you'll see rounds where. One will win and the other will lose it, mm. but then there'll be rounds that will be questionable, and I think you might see Ross just squeak it with that kind of grappling side of things. Fair play, man. It's going to be some scrap, I think, for sure, anyway, and going to be some night as well. Sorry, John, did you want to jump in there? 
Yeah, no, no, I was just going to completely agree and reiterate what they were saying about Dalby's head kicks especially, you know, mm. the speed and time he throws him with. And something I've noticed from uh, from watching a lot of tape on Ross is he starts very sharp, but when when the second or third round comes, he gets very, very lazy with his, with his uh, head movement and his yeah, hands yeah. seem to go so down. So against he's Khalid as well? Like a, yeah, he's, he's just a walking target uh, as the fight progresses. So I think that's something that he needs to be really cautious of mm-hmm. because, I mean, th- th- that... Uh, that right high kick from Dalby, nobody sees that coming. I mean, who did he knock that? Who did he knock out with that at Cage Warriors ninety six? Uh, um, either, yeah. Um, oh no, that was uh, no, no, that no, was no, Cage please. Warriors one hundred. He caught him with that as well. You know, he throws it effort, effortlessly and throws it all the time. Uh, but yeah, I think that's something that Ross really needs to needs to be careful of. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. smart to prepare for it for sure, man. Athleticism is obviously Ross is you know one of his biggest weapons, but size as well, man. You can never under. I mean, the size that he's huge in general, right? But he's huge for middle. Uh, for sorry, for there you go for middleweight. Can, mm. can easily be a middleweight for welterweight. Um, and and I just want to. I like seeing that his athleticism tested. Um, but I think that's what gets the job done here over Dolby. But like like we said, man, anything can happen. That's that's why we love the sport, but. Yeah, cracking out of fights in London. Thank you to all our guests, Nicholas Dolby, James Webb, Ross Houston, Dean Truman. But at this time, let me thank our panel here today, starting with Kieran Cobley. Kieran, always a pleasure, my man. Let our people know where to check out New Sim MMA and what you've got coming up in the very near future. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for having me on. Um, so you can follow us on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, all that good YouTube. Uh, by the New Sim MMA channel, you make sure you follow, to, uh, follow New Sim, our uh, channel uh, editor, uh, New Sim MMA on Twitter. Uh, John Prentice is one of the contributors at MMA and me on Twitter and myself at Cobbley Reporting on Twitter. Uh, we should be at uh, should be at Cage Wars 106. We should hopefully be at Bellator London the week before as well, hopefully. Nice. Uh, so if spot us around, uh, come and say hi. Uh, yeah, thanks for having me on. Okay, man. Always a pleasure, man. And to John Sloan, massive thank you for coming on, sir. Love having you on. Let our listeners know where to follow your work and uh, some of the things that you've got coming up. It's an absolute pleasure, John. Thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, so if anyone uh, anyone types in John Sloan MMA uh, on uh, on YouTube, they can find my video call interviews, which is what I specialise in predominantly. I'd say. Uh, so if you want want a trip to Crown City, then, then, then head over there. <laughs> <laughs> nah, this is a joke. But I, I, I say I, I, I mainly specialise in in European European MMA. So if you're into that kind of thing, then uh, drop a subscribe. It would be greatly appreciated top man and finally to John Ferguson John massive thank you as always sir um, let our people know about MMA Huddle and uh, what's the latest from you guys oh, always happy to come on always a pleasure uh, yeah just 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 google MMA Huddle we'll pop up on the usual on the usual suspect sites and uh, <laughs> just give us a follow if you feel like it and again like you say Newsom MMA and John Sloan I, we follow their stuff so we implore you to follow them as well top man if you've liked this podcast be sure to subscribe on all platforms uh, SoundCloud Podbean Stitcher iTunes the lot man just search for Martial Arts Chat uh, like us on facebook.com forward slash Martial Arts Chat or follow us on twitter at Martial Arts Chat and I'm John Boy McElroy and we'll catch you next time on the Martial Arts Chat podcast Your heart.